<laughs> story time? I don't know. Chris, should I tell a story? You should. I should. Should I tell you about the time I almost burned down my house? Do. Okay. Um, it turns out I'm a bit of a pyromaniac. Um, I've always had this problem since I was a little kid. I can literally stare at fire for hours on end. Um, you know, that actually answers a lot of my questions about you. <laughs> no. <laughs> a lot of things making sense now. <laughs> Um, but I literally can. I don't know why. If there's, like, something burning, I just enjoy looking at it. Uh, I just... I don't know why. That's what I am. Um, <clears throat> so I got so enamored one day, and this is when I was in high school and I learned that aerosol burns. Um, I decided to take a plate, you know, just a regular ceramic plate, and fill it with a bunch of crap from an aerosol can. Um, I think it was, uh, I think it was actually a cleaning liquid. I forgot what it was. I don't know what it was exactly. And I lit it on fire. And this naturally led to a huge, huge flame spurting up from the ceramic plate. Awesome for me. I was staring at it for a few minutes, and then I realized that this thing was really huge. And that I was on carpet. Very burnable carpet. So I run, literally run, to the kitchen. I get a gallon of water from the, from the refrigerator, and I... And I cut the top off, and I just dump, I just dump this gallon of water on the fire. Well, you know what happens when water hits a flammable liquid? The liquid tends to spread, and not all of the fire is put out. Um, this is kind of what happened to me on the carpet. So I panicked, and I grabbed the couch, and I flipped the couch over onto the fire. Now... One of two things could have happened here. Either the couch could have lit fire, or I could have suffocated it. The fire. I was lucky in that I suffocated the fire. <laughs> However, looking back on my transgressions, this was probably not the best idea. I got lucky. So the moral of the story is, if you accidentally light your, if you accidentally light your carpet on fire, make sure you do what I did, and tear the carpet up and replace it with the carpet upstairs within six hours before Dad gets home from work so you don't get in trouble. <clears throat> I like your story times. They answer a lot of questions I have about you. <laughs> and now gray makes perfect sense. <laughs> it does, actually. All the flaming bedrolls. Fire! You know? <laughs> I, I'm admittedly a pyromaniac. I, I love fire. I, I wish I could explain. I, I, I can can't. see that being your entire next session will just be... Fire. Uh, just, yeah, uh, you know, how do you guys want to react to the situation? Gray will be like, FIRE ON IT! <laughs> fire. That, that's what you'll do. He'll be trying to barter with Shopkeeper and Gray instead will light fire to him. Fire, we. And what does Gray do next? Gray stands there and admires the fire solemnly. Hey, Gray just stands there. Just stands there and looks at it. Okay. <laughs> At that point, I think Gray has stepped beyond being a vengeful prick to just lunacy. <laughs> Everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> How you conquered Rolo T's soul and turned him into your sex slave? That's not really a very interesting story. I mean... I mean, we met up at MAGFest, and I was like, listen, Rolo T, I've got a banana, a strawberry, a pineapple, and my penis. Pick one. And he said, well, your penis. And I was like, well, bend over. And he's been my sex slave ever since. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure you took me out to a movie, though. Well, that's after I drugged you and carried you around like you were actually a corpse, and I was pretending that you were my corpse love doll, but, you know, don't believe me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were still breathing, so... Yeah, well, you know. We found Although, a way to make it work be happy next to year, know though. that the movie wasn't bad. It was actually Inception, so, you know, you got to see a good movie once in your life. I didn't even think Inception was out at MAGFest. This MAGFest. Oh! What, what about the rape at the first MAGFest? Oh, but that wasn't my sex slave. That was just rape. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I mean, you know, just bent you over, and you were like, no, no, don't, don't. And I was like, too late, and it was over. Yeah. You never gave me your number. No. I, I sent you to a gay hotline. <laughs> Lord Cat being a pyromaniac is less shocking than Cena being in the locker room? Really? Wow. That is true. I... <laughs> I honestly didn't realize you guys thought I was that insane. 
<laughs> you do kind of have your archer light bed rolls on fire and hurl them at the drop of a hat. <laughs> That's true. He is ready. He is like, ready, willing, and able. There, there doesn't need to be any kind of build up for it either. It, it, it's really just, you know, like someone will sneeze and you'll be like, bed roll, fire, 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 go. And Spoonie's so taken aback by it, and it's just like, what the fuck? How did you get that out so fast? <laughs> I'm watching the Airbender review, and I just gotta say, I just got to your cameo. Ha 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 ha. Thank you. Please, Lord Cat, we think you're more insane than that. You think I'm more insane than a guy? Well, who, you know what? That you think I'm more insane than a guy who just purposefully lights ceramic plates on fire and stare at them, then panics when his fucking carpet goes on fire and throws a fucking couch on it? You think I'm more insane than that? Jesus. Here's the question: Who's more insane? You are Gray. I created Gray, so you know. <laughs> Lord Cat, tell us the story about how you caused the chicken uproar revolution to the human race and no one knew about it. It's a depressing story. Do you really want me to tell that one? I mean... I, it really is depressing, because nobody fucking knew about it. I mean, the whole idea of having a revolution is for shit to happen. And when I went to the farmer's market, and there were all these chickens hanging around, they were about to be headed, I was, I was like, And they were like, Yeah, you know what? The fat guy's right. We really shouldn't be here. This is stupid. And they ran away, but they never really killed anyone. It was... It was disappointing. I can feel your pain. They just ran away into the wild. Now there are wild chickens in the... in the Yosemite National Park. They call themselves the Wolverines. Well, it's the only other word they know besides fat fox, so... They did work for kind of like... five years as the fat fox. Yeah, well, once a train to chicken, always a train chicken, huh? Yeah, you know. Come knock me off the point. Wolverines! Tell us, tell us about the time you were a pickle. Well, I think Roll a T could tell you more about that. I mean, he did use me as a sex object when I was a pickle, but um, it was it was a pretty interesting time, don't you think, Chris? It had its ups and its downs. I mean, yeah. you know, you you never really realize the the real texture of a pickle until it's halfway up your anus, and you know I, when you feel it, it's kind of slimy and a little bit bumpy. But when you get in there, it can be a little bit coarse, you know. Let me tell you, Rolo T's pickling process not the most intuitive pickling process I've ever seen. Um, it involves a lot of salt, a lot of vinegar, and a lot, and I mean a lot, of baby corpses. I don't know what his fetish is with the flavor of a baby, but Jesus Christ, Chris is just right in there with the flavor, with the baby flavoring. I can't get an erection unless I am sucking on some part of a baby's corpse. It, what can't you understand about that? But I was a pickle, and you were like, oh, you need to take And I baby. needed to get my erection, so I started sucking on a baby's leg. Why do you have a problem with that? My problem I is bears no. around. My problem Sometimes is Sometimes pickle... I like to slap children with my erect baby cock. Why did I have to taste like baby though? That's all I want to know. I was pickled with baby. I tasted like baby. What was that? I, was that necessary? I wanted to see if I could taste the ba the flavor of baby through my ass. No. Oh. So I had right. to dip you in it and then and well, I, mean, I could... no, no, that's that's fair enough. I mean, it's a scientific process. You have to do yeah. it before you realize it. So it's kind of like how babies first sense everything by yeah, uh, by tasting with their mouth, and then you you snap their neck quietly behind them and drag them away from their family, and then you cut them up, and then you suck on their body parts, and so you can get erection. You can slap children's faces with it. See, you know? I've tried that before, but I've been arrested, so it's it's not the most. Well, that's why you do it in Virginia. Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> Tell us the time you were a literal, literal cheeseburger apocalypse. Uh, which one? There's several. I am fat. There have been a lot of cheeseburger apocalypses. Uh, there, there really have. And I have been a one-man cheeseburger apocalypse, let me tell you. There was that one time I went to McDonald's and I got a 28 patty cheeseburger. Oh my god. They looked at me in horror and disgust and said, Are you actually going to eat that? And I was like, Are you actually going to make it? And she said, If you pay me. So I paid her and she made it. And I was like... Well, gotta eat it. Now was a one-man cheeseburger apocalypse. See, I have a similar story, except they wouldn't actually serve it to me. But I did manage to convince them to throw 28 patties that were fully cooked into the dumpster. And they <laughs> said I could eat it back there because then they wouldn't be liable for any damages. See, that's because you were poor and you didn't give them any money. No, I, I, I had to pay them. 
Oh, you did pay him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were just giving you recommendations as a homeless man. No, 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 no. They just said I had to eat in the dumpster. That's not too bad. Yeah, well, they threw the other trash in there once. Yeah. Yeah, it adds texture. Yeah, it does, you know. A few condoms, though. That was weird. It wasn't the first time I've had a condom burger, though. To tell you about the time I tamed beholders? <sighs> really? The, uh, I, the beholder story is so boring. I mean, all right, listen. I was in a forest with a girl named Michelle, and Michelle was like, Hey, Jason, listen, what do you want to do? We can either go on an adventure, or we can have hot, naked sex here in the forest. And I was like, Bitch, you're an elf. I don't fuck elves. And I slapped her upside the head, and I was like, We're going on an adventure, you stupid whore. And then she slapped me, and she said, Don't you ever fucking call me a whore again. And then she stabbed me in the throat, so I couldn't talk anymore for the adventure. But luckily, we knew a wizard named Jat and... Ha! <coughs> ha! <coughs> named Aaron Throat. And he was able to fix that little problem for me. But, um, I never called her a whore again. Anyway, we went on our little adventure, and we went to this little dusty plain place. I don't know. Roll T lives there. He calls it, I think he calls it Pennsylvania. It's some shithole desert. It sucks. It anyway, sucks. we went out to Pennsylvania, and, and, and we were all on our little adventure, and we saw a bunch of beholders gathered around a table. Well, it turns out that they really weren't doing anything suspicious so much as eating, well, they were eating dogs. It really wasn't suspicious. I mean, it's a beholder doing what a beholder does. I mean, they eat dogs. And they're beholders. Luckily, they weren't eating kids or anything. Otherwise, we'd have to kick their asses. But we saw them doing this, and we were like, you know what? I bet you that these are just wild animals that we could tame. So I took Rolo T in his hat, and I threw him at the beholders. And then they ate him. And then they shat him out, because they really didn't like him. And he was pretty cool after that. In fact, I think you were pretty much unscathed after that, weren't you? What happened? You got shit out by beholders. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, once they shit out Rolo T, they were pretty much in a state of what the fuck are we? And we were like, I am your new god, you will obey me, and I tamed the Beholders. And so I threw Beholders at Rolo T in the D&D campaign. And then I cried. <clears throat> it does about the time you saved Optimus Prime from Microsoft. That wasn't Lord Cat, that was Charles Barkley. Really, come on, guys. Get your fucking facts straight. Go to the Charles Barkley right. wiki. Come on. Do some fucking research. Shit. <laughs> Tell you about the time I pleasured a Chinese boy with a pair of my underwear? No, I'm sorry. That's a story exclusively for Roll OT at night. Yay. How I became a Time Lord? That is complicated. Um, do you want the short story, or do you want the what-the-fuck story? As long I as recommend the short the, story. As long as it includes the juicy juice, I'm fine. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the short story has to include the juicy juice, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Brutal. Yeah. Alright. Well, the short story is short. I gave a Time Lord a stick of juicy juice, and he made me a Time Lord. Yeah. I mean, without that, it sounds stupid. I mean, it's a trade-off. Essentially, it's a trade-off, but... It's a long story is how it, be how it came to that part. Um, I don't know if we have enough time to talk about it, but... I guess I could talk about it. <sighs> Alright, so I'm sitting down playing... Quake one day. Quake one, we were playing over a land, it was actually a lot of fun. I was kicking this dude's ass with the rocket launcher, I'm like, haha, you can't get me. I was rocket jumping all over the place and parachuting down the level, and he was like, what the fuck, man? How come you're always taking my flags and shit? And I was like, haha, fuck you. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> that's the time that the time-space continuum spinning, it's <laughs> time-space continuum just splits, <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, this fucking phone booth is in my goddamn living room. I'm like, what the fuck? It's a phone booth in my living room. And I look over it, and this dude comes out, and it's big, hulking, black dude, and he was like, hey, man, I need your help. And I was like, what the fuck? It's a big black dude in a phone booth in my living room. What the fuck is going on? And he said, come with me if you want to live. And I was really concerned and confused, but I went with the big black man because he's a big, angry black man who told me to come with him. And if I didn't, he was probably going to kick my ass. And besides, I was playing Quake on land with a bunch of my friends. I, I, I was a loser, and the big black dude in the phone booth seemed cooler. Anyway. I get into the phone booth, turns out this dude's a Time Lord, his breath stinks like a motherfucker. So he was on a quest, not really to save the world and 